last time on Carl Ventures. Nothing! All you need to know right now is that Carl is searching for the lost treasure. Hmm. This seems to be the place. And don't try bossing me around, sign! And welcome to the Cave of Falsehood. The hidden treasure is only allowed to be touched by someone who knows false, and because of that, each room will need you to write a false program. Hope you fail, the treasure keeper. Well, that was a positive note. Challenge one, write a Hello World program, but make it up with the phrase three times. Well, how am I? Oh, I see. Welcome to Carl Ventures, the show where Carl goes on an adventure, he needs to write some programs, and while he's writing the program, I explain how it works. False was created in 1993 by Futter van Ortmersen, and it was named after his favorite truth value. It was created to, one, have a very tiny compiler, and two, confuse people. The compiler wound up only being one kilobyte in size. Of course, someone named Urban Mueller thought that it was still too large and made a programming language with an even smaller compiler. To output a string in false, you just put the string you want to output in quotation marks. Not very interesting, is it? Um, no. Do something better than that. Well, here's the program Carl just wrote in an attempt to get through the door. Wait a second, how did you get it? This program makes use of functions. Any code surrounded by square brackets is pushed onto the stack as a function. And yes, this is yet another stack-based language. You can duplicate whatever is on the stack using the dollar sign, which it does twice. To run a function, you use the exclamation mark, and when it is run, it is also popped off the stack, which is why we needed to duplicate them in the first place. So, what happens now? We go back to see what Carl's doing. Ah! It's fading to black! That's not how I expected that to open. What? What was that? Did I just hear a voice? But who's there? Stay back! I'm warning you! It's just that trooper guy from Paper Mario that likes to annoy Truddle. Hey kid, are you lost? I could help- Shut up! I'm not lost! I was waiting for you the whole time! Prepare to start crying at the feet of Master- Wait, where are you going? I'm walking past you, can't you tell? Gah, what kind of person responds to, are you lost, with a challenge to a fight? Talk about a rotten egg. Challenge two, write a false machine. It's like a truth machine, but reverse, so it up with an infinite number of zeros or a single one. Have absolutely no fun, bad luck, the treasure keeper. Wonderful. I guess that means we're getting another Truddle intermission. You would be correct, Carl. How did you know he said- This is being added in post-production, creaturey. Okay, I know that, but how did he know- A truth machine is a program that takes an input, and if it's a zero, it outputs a single zero. And if it's a one, it outputs an infinite number of ones. A false machine would obviously do the opposite to that. Why are you making up false machines? Shouldn't just making a truth machine be fine enough? Look at the name of this programming language. This program starts by taking input as an ASCII character, which is represented by a caret. It must be preceded with a B, which clears the input buffer and prevents what you typed in from going in twice. It then subtracts 48, the ASCII value for the character 0, and then it goes into a while loop, which can be defined using the number sign. While the first function evaluates to true or negative 1, the second function will run and repeat. The first function checks if the top value of the stack, which should be your input, is equal to 0. It does this by pushing a 0 and running the equal command, which pops the top two values, checks if they are equal, and pushes a negative 1 if they are, and a 0 if they aren't. Since we need your input later, and this command pops values when they are used, we must duplicate that value before running the equal command using the dollar sign. The second function outputs the top value of the stack as a number. Reminder, the top value of the stack should be your input. Again, since we need that value for later, we duplicate it first. After the while loop, it outputs the top value of the stack as a number, and since the while loop is never programmed to stop, it only gets to this point if you never trigger the while loop in the first place. Carl, back to you with actually running the program. The name's Carl, and I'm a caiman, not a crocodile. I changed my mind. I actually am lost. Can I come with you? If you don't take me with you, I'll destroy you, crockface! <sighs> what are these? They're swoopers, idiot! Go open that door thing and get me into the next room. I hate these guys! Challenge 3. Write a 99 bottles of beer program, but since beer is overused, make it 99 of something else. Worst disregards the treasure keeper. What another friendly message. 99 annoying bats in the room! 99 annoying bats! Take one now, knock it out! 99 annoying bats in the room! You guys messed with the wrong Koopa! 
Okay then, that Troopa gets crazier than I thought. I guess I'll use whatever he was saying as the replacement for beer though. False supports one letter variables. Using a lowercase letter, you can push a reference to a variable onto the stack. Using that reference, you can get data from the variable, as well as store data into it. The first line of code pushes the number 99, as well as a reference to the variable B. It then uses the store command, which pops the top two values, and stores the second value into the variable specified in the top value. The store command is represented by a colon. Hold on, what if you try storing, say, 99 into 3 or something? Then you get an ERROR! Specifically, it expects a variable. You can also store functions into variables. This function right here is stored into the variable A. The function first retrieves the value from B using the retrieve command, which replaces the top value on the stack, which must be a variable name, with the value stored inside of it. This command is represented by a semicolon. The program then checks if the value is equal to zero, and if it is, it outputs this string. This right here is a conditional statement. It does the same thing as the exclamation point, run a function, but when it pops the top value of the stack, and only runs that function if the value is not zero. The next thing the program does is quite similar to the last, but it checks if the variable equals 1 instead of 0, and that's all that changed. The last conditional statement here uses the greater than command. It pops two values off the stack, and if the second one is greater than the first, it returns a negative 1. Otherwise, it returns a 0. This function is only run if there is more than one bat, and it takes the value of b, outputs it as a number using the period, and then outputs the string. Next, the program enters a while loop, which runs while the variable b is greater than 0. Inside the while loop, it runs function a, and it follows it up with some text. Between each line in the song, it outputs the character with the ASCII value of 10, the new line. This is accomplished with the help of, and by that I mean entirely by, the output character command, which pops and outputs the top value of the stack as an ASCII character. At this point here, it subtracts one from the value of b, which is the amount of bats in the room. This allows the while loop to also, you know, end. Also, if you're wondering, in false, the first value popped goes on the right of the operator when doing math. What an annoying bat in the room! What an annoying bat! Take what the hell, knock it out! The one annoying bats in the room! <laughs> Dude, what are you, insane? You killed them? No, I'm not that evil. They're just knocked out. This room is calmer. Yeah, thank goodness. Gosh, I'm tired. Challenge 4. Number guessing games are fun, but since false can only take in input one character at a time, make a letter guessing game. One person must set the letter, and another one must guess it. Hope you are traveling alone, the treasure keeper. P.S. While you are reading this letter, my stalactite crusher machine was set off, and the time remaining until it crushes you should be in the corner somewhere right now. Also, you must not only have the program made so the green light turns on, but also have it explained so the blue light turns on, and have the second player guess correctly so the yellow light turns on. Wait, what? Crusher machine? Do something, Crocky! I'm a caiman! 25 seconds late, Zill. Program's done. Drottle, explain how it works so we can get the blue light. Drottle, you better have this explained before I get crushed, or I'm deleting your channel! Junior Troopa, stop wasting time! Uh, this program first takes an input from the user and stores it into the variable L, which contains the letter the player is trying to guess. The variable C is also set to zero, and that variable represents the player one or not. While that variable is set to the value of zero, this piece of code occurs. It gets input from the user again and stores it into G, the guess variable. It then checks if G is greater than L, it duplicates the result so we can use it twice, and if it is, it outputs the word lower. If it isn't, which it checks by using the not command, which is a tilde, it will check if they are equal and duplicate that value. If they are equal, it will say you win and end the game by setting C to negative one. If they are not equal, it will output the word high. What? Am I guessing? I guess A. Higher? Gah. C? Lower? P? C? R? Wow, you saved me! Good job! Yeah, keep in mind, everything I'm doing in here is for my own survival, not because I like you. And that's how you reply to being told good job. Hey look, it's some Red Bull and a sword. I call the sword. The energy drink's mine! Because that's what you need. High amounts of caffeine and sugar. Yet again, the sword might be worse. Whoa, these are amazing! Mario won't know what hit him when I fight him with these things! Red Bull actually does give you wings. Huh. <gasps> it's the treasure! Hey! 
stupid dragon! You kept me! Locked in here! For three days! I'm gonna beat you up so badly right now! Hmm? Adventurers? Finally! I've been looking forward to this day since I took this stupid job! Koopa Kid, why on earth did you just wake him up? Do you know whose bad side you just crossed onto, you big lug? Before you can have the treasure, you must get through me! After you write a turn-based battle game in false about this very fight we are about to have! I know those rules are stupid, but I didn't write them! My boss did! Terrible luck! Much hate! Bad bye! Challenge 5! Write a turn-based battle game in false in which you fight Drexel. It must be both winnable and losable, and include all the people currently with you right now. That includes the person who caused this problem in the first place! Stupid omelette. This turn-based battle game is similar to the one in the Befunge episode, where there are three options you can do on your turn. Unlike that game, however, you control two characters instead of one. The first thing this program does, after displaying the title of course, is assign some variables. It sets all three fighters HP, the amount of special points the player has, and some miscellaneous variables such as Drexel's attack counter, and whether or not Junior Troop is flying. Lastly, it defines two attack functions that deal one damage and two damage to Drexel. The game loop runs while Drexel has more than zero HP. First, it displays some information such as the player's HP and SP. If Carl has more than one HP, it then begins Carl's turn. The user is asked for a letter. If they type A with the ASCII value of 65, he does one damage to Drexel. If they type S with the ASCII value of 83, and he has at least one SP, he does four damage to Drexel and loses one SP. If he types an H with the ASCII value of 72 and has at least one SP, he heals himself by two and loses one SP. After Carl attacks, Junior Troop attacks if he has enough HP. His first attack, which runs if the player types the letter A, runs the normal attack function if the variable F is set to 0, and runs the B function as well as the normal attack function if the variable F is set to negative 1. If you type the letter F with the ASCII value of 70, and you have a special point, Junior Troop starts flying, and by that, I mean the variable F is set to negative 1. He also has the same ability to heal as Carl, but it increases his HP value instead of Carl's. Lastly, Drexel can attack. Since false has no way to generate a random number, it just goes in a cycle. The attack he does is based on what the variable n is currently set to, and after every attack, it goes up by 1. If n goes above 4, it is set back to 0. On Drexel's first attack, he attacks Carl. On his second attack, he attacks Junior Trupa. If Junior Trupa has wings at that point, he loses them. Drexel's other two attacks deal 2 damage and 3 damage respectively to both characters, and Drexel can also heal. Also, if Junior Trupa is flying, he avoids the fire. If both players run out of HP, then a game over message is displayed, and Drexel's HP is set to 0. The slash is a swap, and it swaps the top two values on the stack. It is used here to swap the HP and 0, so we check if 0 is greater. The AND symbol here is an AND operation, and it pops the top two values on the stack, performs a bitwise AND on them, and pushes the result onto the stack. WAIT! Drexel dies even if you lose? Technically yes, but it only does that to escape the loop. Also, if anybody has less than 0 HP, their HP is set back up to 0 so we don't have Carl sitting around with negative 137 HP. Lastly, if the loop is escaped, meaning Drexel has no more HP, and either one of the players are still alive, then a U-Win message is shown. This is an OR command, and it performs a bitwise OR on the top two values of the stack. It is used to check if either of the two players are still alive, so Carl or Junior Troopa. These commands also exist, but I never found a use for them, so I'm just gonna put them here. Carl attacks! Ouchie! Hey, Dragon Breath! I've been looking forward to this since we met! Junior Troopa attacks! Drexel attacks Carl! Oh uh, hey, I have a sword. That's convenient. Carl does 4 damage with his sword. Junior Troopa attacks! Drexel attacks Junior Troopa. It was at that point creature he decided to stop narrating. Good. And I can't get up! You will pay for this, Drexel! Crocky was the first person I met that I didn't completely hate! <laughs> Gosh, you're adorable! Careful! <laughs> it looks like Junior Troop is flying now. Hey! Those 
those were my wings! It's so unfair! What's wrong, scrambled eggs? Lose your wings! <laughs> I'm gonna tell my boss on you! Yahoo! The treasure's mine! Mine! All mine! What? What? Nothing. It's just a little statue! Boring! Tell me when you find something actually interesting. Till then, I'm out. I'm gonna get you, Mario! Turn of statue one of eight. Do not let these fall into nefarious hands under any circumstances. Does that mean I need to go on more adventures? Gosh dang it!